Hey everybody, Andrew here, Saturday afternoon, uh, the 2nd of November, and uh, what am I going to talk to you about this afternoon? Um, as we all know, there are some fantastic atomizers out there at the moment, um, some cost more, some cost less, uh, but there's one particular one which I've been enjoying recently, and it had its genesis, where it actually started was in uh, Switzerland in 2012. And there was four guys, uh, Mark, Christian, Lucas and Andreas. And what they did was they sort of got together, uh, decided that they wanted to try and um, put together an atomizer that would really work. You know, something that would be simple to maintain uh, and would do the job very, very well. So they came up with uh, an idea for an atomizer and a design. And uh, then they did it in association with a turning shop somewhere uh, in Switzerland as well, because this is all completely Swiss made. Uh, they came up with the Squape. Um, so that's what it's called, the Squape. And the Squape comes from Stadtquam or Stadtquam or Stadtqualm. I'm not quite sure how you actually say it. Um, but it's available in a number of different places, in intaste.de and also Cloud9 and a few others. And I'll put up um, the names of the places where they actually, uh, where you can actually get them. So, what does the scrape look like? Well, I've just put it onto my brass nemesis here, just so you can see it. Uh, and it's a, it's a very unusual looking thing. It's, um, it's very much unique in its design. Um, and it's got a couple of really, really good attributes to it, uh, not least the fact that it vapes like a train. It's absolutely fantastic that way. So here it is on a brass nemesis. And I just think it looks brilliant. In fact, I think that is a setup. That looks like something more like you'd buy in a, in a, in a ship's chandlers or something. You know, it's, it, it almost reminds me of something from, you know, um, was it 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea or you know, an old diving bell or something like that. You've got the little windows on the top of it there. You know, I personally love it. I, I think it looks absolutely great. So, um, that's it. That's the scrape. So what we'll do is we'll go down close on it, have a look at it, uh, take it apart, um, show you how it all works, uh, build a coil for it, and then have a go and, uh, and we'll see how we get on. So here it is close up the scrape now see if we can keep this thing in focus um if we look very closely at it there's actually two finishes of um, stainless steel on it uh, we have one here which is you might just be able to see that it's it's kind of got lines going around it and then the other part is just brushed and it's brushed at the top here and then we've obviously got a knurled end and then, as we saw earlier on, it's got these little windows around the side, which I look, I think, look fantastic. You know, um, really, it it could be, out, <laughs> could be out of, as I said, you know, twenty thousand leagues under the sea, or whatever the name of that film is, or some old, you know, kind of space movie or something. But quite heavy, very, very well made. I mean, just beautifully well made. Um, now, just to give you a, a couple of uh, sort of uh, facts about it, the actual um, steel is obviously stainless steel, um, stainless steel base on it as well. Um, the innards, when we get into it, it there's a aluminium in there. This stuff here is called PMMAXT plexiglass, right? Now, apparently, this is. Um, will stand up to pretty much any liquid um, but you know it's not pure pyrex so I'm sure there's some of them that could potentially damage it but it is a very very high quality uh, inset what's going on in here. Uh, the diameter of it is 22.7 millimeters. Uh, the weight is uh, sorry the height is 55 millimeters without the drip tip so let's take that out so that's 55 millimeters from there to there it weighs 82 grams and it actually takes, in terms of liquid, 5.2 mils of liquid, which is quite a considerable amount and more than many of these type of things actually take. 
Uh, the center pin is adjustable, as we see down there. You can see there's a screw on it. We've also got a uh, serial number that they all come out with. And the airflow basically comes in from the side, from here and from here along those channels. And you'll see very, very close, if you look there, you can see the hole at the end. So that's where the actual airflow is coming from. Um, and uh, yes, it'll take any drip tip. Uh, this is the one that it actually comes with, which, look, which looks very, very good on it. So that's that's the sort of the the basis of of um, you know the the various the dimensions, the weights, and all the rest of it. So let's take it apart and have a quick look. Very very simple. The only thing that comes apart on this is the base. So we can unscrew that. And. This is what we are left with inside. So what we'll do is we'll first of all have a look at the tank and then we'll have a look at the base here. Now just before uh, I get into taking this apart, um, I got this one from intaste.de uh, and what it actually came with was a little bag, let's move these out of the way, a little bag of tricks. And in there is a screwdriver, there's a filler bottle there with a pointy nozzle on it. Uh, and then also there's some um, silica and is there any wire? No, I don't think there's any wire in there. But also what came with it was an Allen key. And then inside here we have a couple of spare screws. So these screws here, you have a couple of spares of those. And also you have a spare O-ring. So that is, uh, that's in that there. So you get, you know, when you actually buy it, you get uh, all the bits so that you're able to keep the thing going, uh, you know, on into the future without any issues at all. So what I'll do is I'll just take out my Allen key because that's what I need to open this up here. So if we look inside, we can see that there's a sort of a bell shape here. And this bell shape is actually sitting on top of this here when it's actually screwed in. So to get this out, and generally speaking you're not going to need to get it out unless you want to actually clean it. Um, but as you can see in the middle there, um, we have a, and how many sides is that? One, two, three, four, five, six uh, sides, and here is the Allen key for it. So you just pop that into the middle, give it a twist. Now I have to say when I got this first, I took it out for the first time, it took a hell of a twist to actually get it out. But what you're doing is you're, you're uh, undoing it anti-clockwise. That's, that's the way that you need to uh, screw it out. So let's take this out and have a look at it. So this is it, and it weighs absolutely nothing. You'd almost think it's plastic, actually. Um, and then here's the inside of the actual tank. Now, just to look at how that is all working inside, you can see part way up you can actually see the plexiglass and you can see the windows through the plexiglass so that's an insert that's happening up there and that allows you to actually see the liquid uh, that's inside and then at the top there we've got um, the receptacle or the, the hole that the top of this actually screws into and then obviously the other side of that we have our connector for our drip tip so that's that's basically it. It's as simple as simple as it gets, really, um, but very very elegantly made and very very nicely, uh, very nicely presented. So this little uh, strange bit inside this chimney, and as we've seen in quite a few things now, you know, chimneys are different sizes or whatever seem to be being used quite a lot. They're in K funds and various other um, items. This particular thing, as I said, it, it it almost feels like it's plastic. It weighs absolutely nothing but it's actually aluminium. And it's aluminium that has been coated with a special coating. Um, and what that does is, it, it, um, what it does is it means that it makes it non-conductive, right? So it is almost as though it is plastic, you know, so there's no conductivity at all on this. And um, so that's that piece there. So that's, that's the, the upper part of it, straightforward enough. Uh, and then when we come to the bottom part, Again, this is pretty straightforward. This doesn't really come apart. Uh, on the bottom, as I said before, we have a, um, let's see if I can find a little screwdriver. You can never find a screwdriver when you want to find one. Anyway, just here, 
uh, as you see this is turnable and as you turn it it sticks out more and then turn it back in again and it sticks out less so you know fully adjustable fantastic i love seeing that in in uh, in any atomizer it just means that you're going to be able to control how it sits on whatever mod it is you put in uh, as i said before here's where it's getting its airflow so along here and then you can see there's a little hole in there and then likewise we have the same thing going on over here as well going over to the other side we have a center hole in the middle there. We've got these two screws, and as I said, you get spare ones of those. Um, and then we have these channels here on either side. Now, if we take this piece, and this actually sits over this, when we put it over it, you can see that's how far it goes. So you can see a hole there, and you can see a hole there. and that is where the liquid is going to be going in to the chamber on either side. So essentially what's going to happen is you're going to have a wick running across here with your coil in the middle because that's where you see here this is this is where the the coil is going to be in the center part. Wick going to here and here and then the liquid will be coming up the side and basically loading the wick from both sides and then the coil in the middle is going to uh, you know obviously produce the vapor so that's there's not much more i can say we've got an o-ring here it's nicely knurled at the bottom this is the only part you really have to undo and i suppose one of the great advantages of this is the fact that when you fill it it's very very simple to fill uh, but we'll come to that uh, shortly so next thing to do really is just take this uh, what I can do is just put uh, the top back together because uh, it doesn't need, uh, we don't uh, need it out anymore. Uh, and this basically just uh, screws back in as it did as it came out. And then we'll get our Allen key, pop that in there. As I said, this really only needs to come out if you're actually uh, giving it a good clean. And if you're cleaning it, just sort of give it a good clean with warm water or whatever. And then just twist that in so it's uh, nice and tight back in place we can stick our drip tip in again so that's all ready to go on the top once we've actually made our coil which we're now going to do on this uh, just before we go on um obviously we talk about flaming um canthal or wire before we actually use it uh, for a number of reasons one to just take any you know burn off any impurities but the other reason is just really to you know to get it a bit more supple a bit more bendy a bit more manageable uh, now the one thing that I mistake I used to make is that when I was flaming it I was you know if I got it too hot in one area it would always sort of just bend over and, and almost become sort of useless the one thing that I do now is when I'm flaming wire I'll always hold it downwards because that way it doesn't kink when it gets too hot so for me the easiest way to, to flame it is basically just holding it down like that and by doing it that way it just basically means that it doesn't kink over it doesn't you know it just keeps itself in the shape that you want to actually keep it whereas if I was to show you I'll just do it at the end here if I was to do a piece at the sides here and you just get it a bit too hot, look what happens. It just bends over. So, just a little tip. Anyway, hold the wire so that it's hanging down, flame it up and down that way, and that just means that your wire stays completely straight. Okay, now let's make this uh, little coil. Now basically I have my 0.2 canthal which has been uh, flamed here. Uh, I've got a couple of bits of 3mm wick, um, about 3 centimeters, just over 3 centimeters long. Uh, and then we've got our base that we're actually going to be sticking it on. Now what I might do at this stage is actually I'll just screw the base onto uh, an ohm meter here. Uh, I hope I have a nice 
um, proper base for working on these uh, coming in from Germany um, but uh, this will do me for the moment so what you can do I mean read in reality you can do start off with longer pieces of wick than this um, but uh, I'm just going with uh, this particular size here uh, and what we want to do is to get about um, three or four wraps of the 0.2 canthal on this so let's go one two three now on these ones what we're going to be doing is a, is coming out on opposing sides okay so we want the legs on opposite sides that's how they're actually going to come out so we've got one two three let's see I'm going to undo this one here and we're going to leave it so that we've just got three strands in the middle like that and then we've got a leg coming off there and we've got a leg coming off there okay now um, Navy lifeguards my good mate he basically what he does is he wraps this last one or he'll put an extra half wrap on it so that the leg actually comes out between the two pieces here but every time I do that I seem to make a mess of it so I'm just going to stick with it like this for the moment and we'll see how we go with it and I can see we're slightly uneven there on that side whereas it looks very very pretty on that side but either way we should be fine with that so let's put it on and see how it works out a uh, great thing about these things is that obviously you need a flathead screwdriver um, if you're going to use a screwdriver but because they're knurled you can actually uh, just work them with your uh, with your fingers now as we said at the outset these need to be stacked on top of each other as they are there with the legs coming out so if you've done that properly then all you have to do and get this in position so you can see what's going on is they are going in top on top like that into the center and then what we're doing is we're actually then wrapping the tails around and let's just make sure that we're pushed down properly in here let's see I think we should be fine there then what we do is we just wrap that tail around here and then either, as we said, use a screwdriver or use your fingers just to initially just tighten it slightly to get the position right. And then this one here. And remember, we want this coil to stay in the middle. And that hasn't actually caught. So let's uh, make sure that I have it in properly. Okay, we just uh, roughly tighten that down for the moment. And then this one here, that goes in there, and then we can tighten this down here. So that is like that. And then we can go back to this one here. Just make sure that we're tight. And we are. Okay, so at this stage then what we can do is we can get rid of We'll just push these down into position and we can get uh, rid of these tails. Okay, for that I'll use my trusty little clippers. Make sure that's tight, it is. Clip that off there. And then what we want to do with these is to basically cut these off just at the end, just at the side there. So if you just push it down in each case, so it's snugly into the channel. And then get your nippers or whatever it is you're going to use to cut them. and Just cut it off there like that. And then you can do the same thing on this side here. Again, just making sure that they're nice and snugly in place. And then just shove those down there like that. And what I'm going to have to do is actually go and buy myself a proper pair of wire cutters that can do all of this for me. Now, as it stands at the moment there, what you're seeing is the bottom one there is coming down ever so slightly. 
uh, and I don't really want it like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, pull this up like that, just a bit, so we have enough there for me to actually cut this piece off. That's a bit better. And then likewise on this side here, because we do need to keep these channels clear. So again, just pull that up slightly and we can just get those little hanger honors out of the way. And that should be pretty much it. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, plug this in and see what sort of ohms we're getting on this at the moment. here am I upside down or which way am I around so uh, one one and a half was a 1.6 ohms that's what this is coming out of at the moment which uh, for me is absolutely fine okay what I'd always do um, before I start um, putting everything together is I'd always give these things a bit of a burn um, as you can see the smoke coming off there at the beginning I prefer to get all of that out of the way if I can at the beginning um, and let's just make sure that everything is glowing like it's meant to. Now we probably have a bit extra coming off here because I actually washed this earlier on. So there's a little bit of moisture in the system there. So, But that seems to be doing exactly what it's meant to do. And as you see as a build it really is very very simple. Uh, I probably made it look quite difficult there but it's, it's not. It's just two strands, a couple of wraps depending on what um, outcome you want. Um, pop them in there. And that's basically it. So we'll go ahead and fill it and see how this thing works. Now to fill this thing what you need to do is you can see at the side here there's a gap between our chimney here and the outer wall and that's where the juice is actually going to go into. Now as I think I said earlier on it's just over five mils that can actually go in there so it's it, it is quite a lot but to actually be able to get it in, you will need um, you know, either a syringe or a needle nose bottle. Now what I tend to do is I use um, a bottle like this, which is a needle, needle nose bottle. And then really it is just a, simply a case of popping it in down the side, as you can see there, between the chimney and the wall of the thing, and then just um, fill it up. So I've probably put about, I don't know, three, four mils in there at that stage and that's enough for me for the moment uh, and as you can probably see you can see the liquid now uh, inside the actual in fact I'll just put a little bit more in fill it up and that should do it's probably not quite full but close enough to it now before I do anything and again I, if I got my sequencing right on these things again as ever you know you should always just uh, prime the wick just to help the thing get going and that should be good there and then it really is just a simple case of popping that in there like that screwing it on and that's it you can see the liquid inside so I didn't fully fill it up but um, that's completely loaded now. And the great thing about this is, unlike some other things, you know, with the K fun, you've got a filling hole that you have to actually, you know, be a little bit careful about when you're filling it at the bottom. Uh, but with this thing, as soon as it needs filling, literally upside down, unscrew this part here, take it out. It'll be a little bit wet, of course, because it's had uh, liquid on it. Pour your liquid in there, screw this back on again, and it's as fast as a Formula One pit stop. It is incredibly quick to actually uh, uh, sort this out. Uh, the other thing, of course, you could do within this, and I haven't done it in this case, is put a micro coil into it. In which case, then you know when you actually need to change the wick, um, you can just really just pull the old wick out, give the coil a bit of a burn, compress it a little bit, uh, pop a new wick into it, and uh, again, you know, incredibly fast to actually do. So let's put this on something and see how it vapes. Okay, so we have it all together. Now I just need to make sure I'm just sticking it on uh, this mod here. I'll show it to you on a couple of mods just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, this is a silver nemesis here. Um, 
and uh, let's give it a go now. I haven't, since I filled it, I haven't taken a pull on it yet. So, and as ever with these things, they take a little while just to bed in when you get your, your first one in there. So, there it is. It's marginally bigger than the Nemesis in terms of diameter. But I think with this, because you've got this knurled part here at the bottom, the base of it, um, I think, you know, for me, it doesn't matter. Some people, they need absolute, it has to be absolutely the same diameter. Uh, in this case it's not, but you know what, I don't care, it doesn't make any difference because it, it to me it still looks absolutely fantastic like that. So, um, so let's give it a go. That's off the bat. Okay, so that hasn't, that hasn't bedded down at all. There's a new battery in that, so it's probably running 4.1, 4.2 at the moment. And I think we, what did we say, it was one and a half ohms uh, was the actual coil on it. Um, so again, working very, very nicely. Um, there's a couple of things uh, about this that I like, the draw on it. Now, as far as I know, you can't really affect the draw. Um, but the draw on it to me is pretty much perfect. It's not too loose like some of them. Um, you know, when you're taking a drag on it, you feel like you're taking a drag. Uh, but at the same time, enough is coming in that it feels as though the drag is, is worthwhile doing. Sometimes with some of them, you know, I mean, you'd end up with looking like a bloody squirrel with your cheeks out, you know, um, trying to get, uh, you know, enough vapor in. But with this, you know, just a normal drag on it. No effort, and it works great. Another thing about this, another one of its greatest attributes, which for me is one of the most important attributes that's out there, uh, obviously, well, not the most important, you know, flavor and throat hit and vapor and all of that are obviously terribly important, but my other thing is leaking. And these things do not leak. You know, no matter what way you hold them, you know, I have been carrying this around a lot um, in my pocket. Um, it's been in the car, it's been everywhere, but you know, da 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 and makes no difference at all. It just, uh, you know, it just doesn't leak and it just works absolutely faultlessly every time. Now, how does it compare? Uh, any of you who have seen some of my other videos, you'll know that, that I'm a massive K-Fun fan, whether that be the 3.1 or the light. In fact, the light is probably, uh, you know, would be ahead of the 3.1 for me because um, I just like its simplicity and I'm happy with the draw on it. Some people think it's a bit airy. I don't. I'm happy with the draw on it. Um, so comparison-wise, what's it like? Well, taste-wise, it's very similar. Um, and I'm not going to say that one is better than the other. I think they're both, you know, certainly from my palate. Uh, and what I have in here is my usual Cigarillos um, 12 milligram. Uh, and that's what I'd normally have in my K-Fun as well. It is virtually impossible for me to tell the difference in the taste between the two of them. So I'm not going to say that one is better than the other. Um, but I suppose one of the advantages of this over the K-Fun is the easy filling on it. Uh, on the K-Fun, if it's the light, you've, you know, you've got your little screw at the bottom, you have to take it out, uh, then you have to be careful when you're actually putting the liquid into it, because, you know, there is a sort of a pressure thing going on in there, and, you know, if you try and put it in too fast, you can get it leaking out of the top and things like that, so uh, it's not a difficult thing to do, and it's something that I do in my sleep at this stage, because I tend to use K-Funs more than anything else, but there is an absolute simplicity to actually filling these things up. Um, plus as well, the capacity on these would be uh, greater, I think, as far as uh, the amount of liquid that you can put in, so you'd have to fill less often. Um, I'm not going to say that I prefer this to the K-Fun, because I adore the K-Fun. What I am going to say is that this is almost... Look, it's as certainly as good as, some people would say, better than the K-Fun. Um, but I think in the end, a lot of this is down to, when you get to the, sort of the top end of sort of atomizers like this, 
it's you, the liquid, or rather the flavour is going to be great, the vapour is going to be great, the, all, the overall experience of it is going to be great. And after that, it's just down to what personal taste. You know, it's like, do you like something that looks like a, an old, um, you know, underwater diving bell? Uh, well, I absolutely love that. I think it's, I think it's fantastic looking. Um, or would you prefer... You know something like that. You know, so the so the K fun. I mean, there. That's that's a simpler looking thing. This is, uh, you know, sort of slightly more different. But again, look at the size of size difference as well. If we go from the top, um, the scrape is considerably bigger, but it holds, you know, more liquid as well. So in the end, it's it's down to personal preference. Um, if I was going off for a long time. You know, and I didn't want to be bringing the sort of extra bottles of juice with me. I know that I could get, you know, quite a long time out of this without having to refill it. So I'm not going to say anything more other than the fact that I think that the Squape is, I think I said it's about 120, 125 euro. They're quite difficult to get hold of. Again, I think it's this, the, the whole business of um, there's a huge demand for these things because they are very, very popular and people do love them. Um, they can make only so many of them at any uh, given time. So quite often if you go looking for them, you're just not going to be able to get them. Uh, they're not going to be in stock. Uh, but my suggestion is that if you want a high capacity, very, very high quality atomizer, you know, tank with a very easy coiling method on the inside. And that's only one coil, by the way, I put into it. There would be lots of other ways that you could put coils into it. Um, but that's the simple, simplest one, just basically three wraps. I think it was a 3-4 that I put into it. You know, pop it in, do the things up, snip them off, cut off the ends, a little bit of liquid on it, fill up the tank, screw the yoke in, bang, that's it, and you're gone. So as a rebuildable, it really doesn't get any more simple than this. So that's all I'm going to say about the Squape. A fantastic, fantastic atomizer. Recommend it to anybody. I mean, it really is up there. A really, really fantastic thing. Uh, and um, if you like the look of it, if you like the fact that there's an extra capacity uh, in terms of the juice that's in there, so you're over five mils that you can put in, and if you like the simplicity of the whole thing, then the Squape has to be uh, on your list as, as uh, you know, something to consider. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll catch you again soon. Cheers.